Hello there and welcome. In this video I got 10 tips, tricks and strategies around the topic food and against the storm. There's a lot of different things that I'm going to talk about, ranging from what kind of food you want to have in specific situations, what you can do with your food, how much food you need. I really tried to give you a nice overview about as many things as possible and I hope that by the end of this video something will have helped you out. Now. Let's get started with a very basic one. Number one in this list is around raw food. Avoid raw food as good as you can. You can, via consumption control, forbid it entirely. And as a rule of thumb, if you can process it into something better, it shouldn't be eaten raw at all. So, for example, in a situation like this, where I got a smokehouse, I should really try to forbid insects and meat right away, as long as I have people in there, just as an example, to make sure that we don't waste that. Because as you see there, we put four pieces of food in and we get 10 pieces of food out. So raw food is always the worst. It's not only inefficient, it's also not providing any bonuses. It should be really just the last thing to take and just something during the early game, end of the line. This might be pretty basic, but I find it very, very fundamental to know. And I also want to point out that there's nothing wrong to feed your people at the beginning of the game with raw food or use things that you can't process furthermore as food in this scenario. But you should be aware of this and use this because it's powerful and lets you create way more complex food out of the same amount of stuff. Number two. Moving on over to the famous question, how much food do you need? So I want to explain first off how the whole food thing works here. So your people take regular breaks every two minutes, except if you are a lizard or a harpy, then you take a break every one minute and 40 seconds. During this break, they pick up something to eat and they eat it. If there is no complex food available, they will take a piece of raw food and eat it. If there is complex food available, they will eat it. If there are various types of complex food available, they will have more than one meal. So this is just how it works. That means every season has roughly four minutes, except for the storm season where the uh, duration can vary depending on your difficulty and whatnot. So you could say every villager requires two pieces of food per season, stat. So this way you can calculate your way up what you're going to need, but roughly a citizen is six food per year, depending on your difficulty level again, because the storm season's uh, duration is variable. The drizzle season too, but uh, that's another kind of worms. Either way, this is roughly the metric, what you need, and that's it. Just wanted to give you that calculation so you finally don't need to sweat about it anymore. Number three, I want to talk about the option that you use your special complex food for storms or for... Um, here, glade events. Sometimes these impose pretty heavy resolve penalties. So you can totally hold back certain foods for those special occasions. Because basically, like I said before, you don't need to feed everybody that much of a food. You can hold it back. But keep in mind that when some species gets to eat a food and another doesn't, this will make people unhappy. So for example, if I exclude the beavers out of the biscuit diet, they will be pissed if somebody else gets those biscuits. So if you want to use that, my personal approach and uh, recommendation is pick up something from a trader and keep that stack for bad times. That's a pretty nifty way how you can also get that negative resolve back up during storms, for example, by having that secret stash of the fine food. Sometimes that can make the difference. Number four. Sometimes you can just all together skip service buildings and just make food and win the game with that, especially working well at the lower difficulty levels. I want to point uh, the following out. The beavers can enjoy pickled goods, biscuits, and well, all right, they are not so much into food, they prefer clothing. The lizards, they take four different types of food. If the majority of your citizenship is lizards you can crank out plus four plus nine plus 14 
and a weapon plus 22 on the resolve just by food alone. Of course, services are also powerful and all, but some species like here the harpies, also three types of food, can just win the game just with food alone. You don't need to go all the way down the service line. Sometimes it's just enough to provide food and clothing, and that can, together with the orders and some smashed cash, win you easily the game. This works the, the less good, the higher the difficulty you go, but, you know, sometimes I had really lost games because I didn't focus enough on just providing more different food and I was just too hell-bent on building that tavern or that temple and I literally lost the game because I just didn't produce more food. And that's one thing that I want to point out here. So number five, I want to talk about collectors versus farmers. So you have always on each and every map these nests and whatnot where you can farm these things via the collector's camps, or you can go for fertile soil and have a constant income. So generally, as a rule of thumb, if you want to rely on collectors alone, you need cornerstones and buildings. Otherwise, you will be not able to fulfill your, 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 your goals and you will be constantly exploring further. It is a viable strategy, nevertheless. If you happen to draw the lizard building that gives you even more income out of uh, collector's camps, it's even better. There is a lot of oomph behind that, but you need to focus that. If you are unlucky, you might even fall flat because of that. So the other extreme, if you want to rely on farms alone, I would re uh, recommend you to have at least four farms if you don't have humans available. And if you have humans available, three might be okay. If you want to know what kind of farms, well, it is kind of easy. I always like to go for two different types of farms tops. And I distributed with a uh, two-third to one-third or three-quarter to one-quarter distribution. That means three farms of one type and one of the other, or two farms of the one type and the other one of the third type. You can, of course, vary. It is always depending on the amount of fertile soil that you have available, and therefore it is not that much of an easy decision. But you can very well mix these things, like have collector's camps and farming, and that will be the most common way how you do it. But generally, I want to uh, give you another TLDR here. If you want to go collectors only, it doesn't really work well without keystones and uh, drafted buildings and farms are a very reliable but more labor intense way. The big benefit from collectors is that you get your stuff way faster collected and permanently collected with the downside that it depletes after a while. But all in all, this way you can roughly choose for yourself. The numbers of farms here, of course, are really relying on your city. The larger the city goes, the more farms you need. So yeah. It's not easy to generalize that, but I hope these thoughts might help you out here. Number six, the porridge superstar. Seriously, there are some foods that are better than others, and the porridge is just one of those. Um, where can I hit the recipes panel? So why is porridge so good? Mm, porridge has the ability to hide itself down here. Porridge is so good because it consists only out of one type of food and water. So that water is always acquirable. You just need to put up a rain collector and you can create food out of the most horrible things. And the best part about it is some people even like it. But even if you just use it to fill your people, as you see here, just as an example, even the two star refineries get a pretty decent reward out of that, and that can get even higher with that. So porridge is one of those foods where I gotta say, it's always good to draft this, because generally you will always have access to one of these four things somehow, or if you don't, it is worth checking them out, as water and a basic type of grain will resolve lots of your problems in almost any game. It's a foolproof way to go for porridge in basically every run, because these four items are pretty much available on any map. 
It's really amazing and it is that easy. Special superstars here are the grain and the herbs. If you have access to one of either one of these, you can make something inedible directly edible, which is amazing. As grain needs usually to be processed into flour before you can go for it, and herbs usually need something, some kind of fuel to be edible. So really good stuff. Porridge is the real superstar in the complex food areas, in my humble opinion. It is not that popular though. That is the downside. If you check out here, these three species, none of them likes porridge, but they don't hate it and it gives you a nice quantity. So porridge, go for it. So number seven, I want to talk about ranches because these are also something that is really, really powerful and you totally shouldn't miss them out. So here, already marked it before. So ranches can provide food and they are not super efficient. As you see here, you're not necessarily upgrading on the plant fiber front, but here again, vegetables go directly into meat and eggs can be produced also with a somewhat decent efficiency. A special superstar here are the berries. Ranches are again one of those buildings, if you can draft it, it just does convert one raw food into another, but it multiplies it in the process. As you see here, there is not a single recipe where you would lose anything. It's just that good. The only problem that you might face is that plant fiber and reed are sometimes non-renewable for you. But if that might be the case, maybe you'll find something over on the eggs front. Either way, ranches. They provide raw materials for a lot of good uh, foods and basically they are pretty much safe to pick, especially if you have lizards as they can work well here. And many foods can be produced with the items that the ranch provides. And it even provides an access to a renewable source of fabric that isn't food related, but it's also very, very nice because food buildings just often don't are that flexible. So number eight, I want to talk about herbs and flour as these are very, very special materials in this game. So flour is basically the more complicated uh, superstar version of, um, of grain as we can make flour out of a lot of different things and we can transform flour into a lot of different things as well so if you check it out flour can go into biscuits and pie which are just super powerful foods and a lot of people love them and yeah it is just very very powerful to go for this but it is a very labor intense thing flour can be made out of very out of the most various things so you can make flour out of mushrooms and roots. That is one thing you should totally keep in mind because many maps don't offer grain, but they might be offering roots and mushrooms. So keep an eye out for that because flour is another one of these items which is compatible with a lot of different food uh, buildings. Therefore, it is a pretty safe pick to gamble on it as you will have a pretty li high likelihood of drafting a building that can one way or another operate with flour but at the same time it is a little bit more risky and I had several runs where I sat on the flour and was starving because of that so when in doubt go for the uh, porridge first and go for flour produce flour only if you have some place where you can process it don't go blindly into flour as it can be a real dead end for you it is really that brutal. Herbs, on the other hand, are another interest interesting thing, as they can be, like we already saw, be processed into pies, which is amazing, as these also go into all manner of different things. But they also go into packs of provisions, which yield money. So herbs are a really, really interesting crop, which you, if you ha can, shouldn't pass on but here again they are a labor intense thing they can be rarely directly uh, processed so keep that in mind when you are gambling around herbs and flour they are super good but they require work and they require a fitting building so they might be risky as a rule of thumb if you have the building to process that stuff it's always a safe draft to pick up these but the other way around well 
I crash landed a couple of times because of that. Number nine, specialize. So whatever you do, if you get the opportunity to specialize on a certain production in terms of food, go for it. It doesn't matter if your whole city just has to live off of jerky. If you can produce hundreds and hundreds of that, it is totally fine. Heck, even if you are going for raw food exclusively, if you have lots and lots and lots of it, go for it. Whatever keeps your village fed slash city is totally okay. As you see here, there's plenty of cornerstones that allow you to crank up the production to the max. Stuff like uh, extra delivery lines or even site productions for things that we produce directly. There's also cornerstones that increase the amount of produced goods. Where are we? Come on. It's always the ones that you're looking for in that moment. So... It's not what I'm looking for, but I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. They'll be showing up any second. Either way, specializing into food stuff here is an absolutely valuable process. And the more of these cornerstones you can pick that fit your current situation, the better. Because this is just really, really cranking out something that will keep you alive. In the very worst case, you... Ah, here, finally one. In the very, very worst case, you are producing a, a good that you will be exporting. Since Against the Storm does not have any form of spoilage, you don't need to worry about stockpiling too much. It's pretty much the other way around. Not having enough is a problem. Never the other way around. Since your warehouses are endless, there is never the risk of overspillage that you can't store things or they will just go bad. No, not with food. There are several parts where the game penalizes you for storing too much, but food is ex either extremely rare or it doesn't exist at all. I don't know. Maybe there is an event regarding that. Last word about specialization. These cornerstones, like grain bags, they exist for various goods are super powerful, but only if you pull them early enough. If you are able to pull one of these early on, it might be even able to uh, worth gambling on acquiring a building, even if you have the building, not yet, because these can transform into absolute monstrosities after a couple of years. If you start cracking out really these ridiculous numbers per harvest, it's really good. All right, number 10, the last thing that I want to talk about is I want to show you a trick that I uh, found really, really useful to conserve a little bit of food. So like I said in number, in number two, people are eating complex food during their break. And if there are more complex foods available at once, they will eat more of these. You might not want that. So as a example, we could go here for the um, beavers and just allow them one complex food that is available. For example, here pickled goods. And then we move on over to the lizards and give them only scores. And the harpies only receive pie. This does require some sort of management, micromanagement and balancing and making sure that you have enough stuff on the stockpile of these. But it is a really easy way of preventing your people of just eating through your stockpiles blindly. Eating through your stockpiles blindly is also kind of a victory condition. But if it doesn't make your people happy enough to crank out reputation via high resolve, you're basically wasting food and you can't shut that down. Yes, it is quite uh, annoying to manage that, but it is nevertheless effective and you can use the food for other things. Either way, this is what I had on my mind for this entire topic. I hope it'll help you out in this regard. When you don't know where you want to go with your food stuff, Always check out your uh, citizens. That's one last thing that I found pretty obvious, but I wanted to add it in in case somebody's missing it out. Every food that is liked by two parts of your citizenship is absolutely great. So in this city, we would be good with jerky, 
or biscuits, as these are preferred by two parts of our citizenship. Ideally, biscuits, because the largest parts of the citizenship love these. So that's where I'll end it. Little hidden point 11. I mentioned that in a previous video already. That's why I didn't want to put it here on the list. Now then, thanks for watching. Of course, I'm pretty sure that there's more than 10 slash 11 things to say about food. Let me know what you have on your mind and leave a thumbs up for the algorithm if you enjoyed the video. I would be deeply appreciating your subscription as well if you enjoyed this video. I'm putting out similar stuff quite regularly. In the description box down below, you will find several links to against the storm related things. Also my Discord server where you can find like-minded gamers and me, of course. So come on out, hang out, chat a bit if you want to. I'd be really delighted. Also, of course, there's Patreon, PayPal, and buy me a coffee down there. And a big, big thanks to all the supporters of the channel. Check these links out. These are the best ways of supporting the channel directly. And of course, at the very end of this video, thanks for watching it until the very end. I really appreciate having you guys around. I hope you have a good time and see you all for the next video. Bye bye.